Hey guys, Toolman Tim here. Welcome back to the workshop where we create community, find freedom, promote preparedness, and share success. It's Wednesday morning, which means it's time for another edition of the Tool Time Gear Review. And this is the one you've been waiting for. These are my top five reviewed tools of 2021. All right, guys, real quick before we dive into the list. If this is your first time here and you want to know more about me, run by toolmantim.co. That's toolmantim.co. You'll find the monthly newsletter, all my social links, and of course the shop, where I recommend a ton of cool gear, stuff just like these tools I'm going to talk to you about today. So here we are, the top five items. Now, number five is something I never, ever thought that I would get into wearing. <laughs> my wife always says, I'm not a belt guy. I hate belts. But recently I got really frustrated. Well, but you know, in the spring, I got really frustrated with whenever I was doing a job, I would always be running around. Okay, where did I put my pencil? Where did I put my tape measure? Where did I put my square? I'd set it down. Then I'd go over there and pick it up. Come back there and pick it up. So we're into Lowe's one day and I said to my wife, I said, I'm going to pick up a tool belt. And she laughed at me. She said, you're not, you'll buy it and you'll never wear it. And I thought, well, that's motivation. But I tried on a few and I settled on this AWP nylon tool belt. Now they make a leather one as well, but I really like the nylon. It's soft. <laughs> it, it absorbs sweat as opposed to, you know, kind of sticking to it like leather does. It fits your body really well. The belt is tight. It has these nice cushions on the inside. Everything is Velcro so you can adjust it. It's just big enough. It works well. It's got a tape measure pouch, nail pouches, uh, the hammer ring right there. Nice buckles, nice belt. Honestly, I'd always had my eye on a nylon tool belt. I didn't think I would wear one. And if you're watching this and you're like, you're a handyman and you didn't wear a tool belt, well, wait till you see what another one of my products is afterwards. But <laughs> seriously, if you're looking to get into a tool belt, AWP seems to be the way to go. I love it. Of course, it keeps everything on your waist. If you're up a ladder working, you've got everything there. You got nothing to worry about. The damn thing's comfortable. I wore it in the plus 40 degree Celsius weather when I was out there putting siding on the house this summer and it never let me down. It just sits there. It's your silent partner. It's your third set of hands. Wait, I don't have three sets of hands. It's your third hand. How about that? To hold on to stuff so that you don't need to go up and down a ladder a hundred times. And honestly, if you're looking at a tool belt, you could do a lot worse than one of these entry level AWPs. I love it. I'm going to wear it till I wear it out. And then I'll probably get another one because they're not that expensive. Like I said, there'll be links to all this stuff in the description below. Number four, man, there's so many to pick and it's so hard to choose, but we're going to go with the DeWalt push mower. And if you watch my DeWalt top five video, you'll know that this was number two. I love this damn thing. It comes with two 10 amp hour batteries. I want to say all metal frame, but almost an all metal frame. The parts that are plastic are a really heavy duty plastic. This thing held up to a full year of mowing better than my Toro entry level gas mower ever did. The wheels are incredible. The runtime is 70 minutes on two fully charged batteries. I was able to get 10 or 11 lawns usually out of that. But if we, if we had both of them going, we were able to get the full 15 because we we're each only doing half. The things held up well, nothing's broke. Everything's just worked. And what I love about it, no gas, no fumes, no noise, no heat, all of that. I, no spilled gas either, but I just love it. This thing is built well. The handlebars are great. The, the push bar on it. That's what I really like about it is it's taller and longer than any of the other ones. And I don't know if you can notice right here, but the damn thing folds down. You can't store a gas one like this because the gas would go everywhere, but it folds up like this. The footprint of storing it in your shop is so much smaller and you can even hang it up on the wall if you want to. But honestly, you'll never be disappointed with this guy. I'm interested in seeing what Milwaukee comes out with. They've got a couple coming out this year. DeWalt has a walk behind one as well, but I like the push ones. I like just varying my pace the way I want to and not have to worry about self-propelled. And you get the full runtime out of the batteries that way without using any toward the um, propelling of the motor. Number three, and this was my top DeWalt item this year. So if you've seen that review, you'll know what it's gonna be, but it is my lovely little four port rapid charge DeWalt charger. This is the thing, it's just the, just sits over there on my workbench and it keeps all my charging capabilities 
all together in one little package. It charges my five amp hour batteries in about an hour. Even with four running on it, it still only draws 600 watts. I'm quite impressed with that. It has a fan if it gets overheated. It's intelligent if it's too cold or too hot, it won't turn on. It just sits there and the light blinks, which I guess is a good thing. But honestly, this the model number is a DCB104. It's not cheap, but it's worth the investment. I've got seven or eight of those black little chargers all in a box now out in my front shed that I just never use anymore. Like I said in the other review, you never know what kind of amperage they're going to be. You don't know if it's a slow or a fast. There's no way to tell how fast it's charging, nothing like that. And I just wanted something that consolidated it all into a single item. So if you're looking for something, jump on it. The rapid charger is the way to go. It's an investment, but if you've got a ton of gear, because <laughs> I love my black and yellow, if you've got a ton of DeWalt gear, that's the way to go. Number two is a tiny little item. <laughs> it's a literal lifesaver in some ways. And this is the one that you'll probably also laugh at me because you'll say, Tim, you're a handyman and you never had one of these. But this is the Klein Tools uh, Voltage Tester, shaped just like a pen. And it has made my life so much easier. I, I got to admit, when I used to go and do electrical work, quite often I would just go and, you know, kind of do the, you know, the uh, screwdriver test to make sure there's no power there or turn the power off. But then the problem with turning the power off is if you're not sure where the problem is, you're not sure how to fix the problem. So what I, I love this just, I went back and I did a job recently where I wasn't sure if it was a GFI plug or if it was a light up on the side of the house that was bad. And I wasn't sure. And if, if I'd have done it the old way, I might've replaced them both. I might've tore one out, tested it, put it back in. It would have taken me three times as long. But with this, I'm able to just turn it on, go along, power, 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 no power. Boom, you know right where your problem is. And it also tells you if something's live. So if you're working on something and you think you've got the power turned off and you don't, this will tell you. It also has a probe for sticking in the electrical outlet. It'll tell you if there's power there. If not, uh, it does low voltage and high voltage. So the first one is 12 to 1,000 and the second one 70 to 1,000. So if you have it on low sensitivity mode, all you got to do is get within a couple of inches of a cord and it will beep for you. If you got it in high sensitivity mode, uh, in, in high mode or whatever, you got to have it almost right on the plug. But if you're looking for something, again, Klein Tools makes a great tool. It takes AAA batteries, which for me, I love. I try to standardize on both AAA and AA. They're great to have. It also makes an audible alarm, although you can turn it off if you're in an area where you don't want the beep to carry on. It also has a handy dandy LED flashlight. And yeah, that's really, it's just a tool that does exactly what you want it to do. I mean, don't use it as a substitute for turning off a breaker, but it, it sure beats the hell out of not having any tool at all. This thing goes everywhere. It's in my everyday carry toolbox. I use it all the time. I liked it so much that I ended up buying a Klein Tools circuit tracer as well which has been another cool tool. And you'll see a review on that coming up in the new year. And number one, can you quite see it right there? I don't think you can, that's all right. This was another tool, you guys will find out. I, I see cool tools on Instagram sometimes and I think I gotta go buy that. And I saw this one, it was a folding sawhorse that you just hit the button and the legs all deployed. I thought, man, that thing's awesome. It was like 200 bucks, oh, it's a little much. So everybody said, Tim, you gotta check out the tough belt. They're almost as good. They work just the same. They just don't have the quick release function. So I ended up buying a couple of these at Princess Auto one day, which is like the Canadian version of Harbor Freight, except this is the actual brand. It's a good brand. And I use these all the time. This year was the year that I wanted to streamline my tools. I wanted to clean up my workshop and I've succeeded. I've got more room in here, more room for activities, if you know that reference. These things fold up to this size right here, they fit over in the corner. If I want to carry them, I just grab each one with a handle, go throw them on the back of the truck. They're lighter, more compact, and easier to move around than my old handmade wood ones. I still have them, they're over in the sea can across town, but I got no use for them. These guys are great. On purpose, I left them out all summer because I was working on siding. I would just leave them set up, whether it rain, shine, you know, whatever it happened to be. No rust. No muss, nothing. They've got a nice powder coated finish, a nice, um, what do they call it, grip tape top. 
the feet. I don't know if I can get them released here for you with one hand or not. Yeah, there we go. So you just pull them out like this. Now, what's really cool, I don't know if I can show you or not, but the feet are adjustable. So say you're on uneven ground, you can leave one foot out, one foot in, and the whole thing just collapses so simply. The only thing you got to be careful of is not to jam your fingers. But that's it. They, these are the best sawhorses. I want to say the best sawhorses money can buy, but these have been my go-to baby. They are my favorite tool. I knew after about two months, I said, it's going to be hard to find another tool that'll be my top tool of the year. And sure enough, these were it. You know, I spent a little bit on them. In Canada, they're a little more than what they are in the States, but they were absolutely worth the investment. They make a good job site table as well. So you set up two of these and put a sheet of three quarter inch ply on top of it, and it gives you a work area. So yeah, I, I don't know what else I can tell you. I love these damn tough built uh, saw horses. To me, they were worth every penny of an investment. So I hope you liked this year. I hope you enjoyed going through this list with me. I love top 10 videos. I'm a sucker for them. And I really hope you guys do too, because I put a lot of them together this year and I've really enjoyed them. Uh, they've been awesome. Uh, this was the flagship video. So I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe you'll see something. I know it's getting awfully close to Christmas, but you might decide you want to pick something up as a Christmas gift for somebody. If you do, great. I'd love to hear your review of it or I'd like to hear what you bought in 2021 that was different than I bought that you said, hey, Tim, you're an idiot. You should have got this instead. I like hearing that kind of stuff. Anyway, guys, that's it for me this week. If you want more of my videos, hit the subscribe button, stick around, and as always, stay happy, stay healthy, and have a great week.